Welcome to the Encore today. We are going to talk about modesty, uh, what that, what, what you might assume it means, what mm-hmm. a lot of people would put to that, and some other some other things. It's definitely worth talking about, and a word that gets thrown around. Was this a request? Decent. Was this a viewer request? Okay, kind of. So it was. I think it. Was, <laughs> we might have stolen this one. I think it was requested for walk worthy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. but but okay. I do want to say this. I see. Not well, they can sn- do it too. They can, and not to step on Walkworthy's toes at all. And I don't want to give away our whole premise, but it is—it's much more than, yeah, just about ladies. So hundred percent. That's 100%. why. Just yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it's not just about. Yeah. So I, w- enough that we thought. I, we, I think we could cover this on a broader base. Okay. They could. They could certainly hit it if they wanted directly. Mm-hmm. We'll let them deal with it. Let's talk about the state of Michigan for a second. Yeah, for let's talk about for it. For people's entertainment. You okay. and I do this kind of thing all the time. All the time. time. All I know. the time. I know. Sometimes people enjoy it. Sometimes they wish we would just go away. Mm-hmm. I understand both. Uh, but this is, you know, helping people get to know us. You and I do constant lists, top five lists, yeah. top three lists, yeah, best and worst lists, yeah. best state, worst state. We do, we do. All the time. You and I got into a war, a absolute <laughs> friendship ending war we over did. Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Kobe Bryant the other day. We and did. it was fantastic. Yeah. But we're not going to do that to you. People. No, we, we won't. won't do that. We we'll won't. save that. <laughs> Here's my question for you. I was thinking about this the other day. I think it was something on TV or somebody mm-hmm. on TV. Just answer as, as quickly as you can. Give it a moment of thought. Okay. Who's the most famous living person in the state of Michigan? Jim Harbaugh. The answer is Gretchen Whitmer. Okay. No? Uh, um, eh. Tom Izzo. I know I'm a sports guy, so my mind immediately goes Nationwide. there. Nationwide. Like famous, just flat yes. famous. Like here's, you, what I'm, here's what I will tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. There are people in California. We're already into it. We're already into yeah. it. I, I thought this would be a no-brainer. There's people in California that couldn't name the governor of Michigan. Quite a few. That, she's she's spoofed on SNL. She's one of the most famous not, governors in the United States. Do you not she, think so? Who's the most famous governor in the United States? I can give... I, th- I call her third. She's... The, I can't even come up with his name. The dude in Florida. Ron DeSantis is number yeah. one. Who's number Des- two? If not number one. Um, currently? Dude, I don't know right if I can now. come up with anybody else. you got to give me a second to come up with, like, uh, who's the governor of any other state? Could I even come up with one? Gavin That's, Newsom, California. I've heard of him, but I couldn't have pulled his name, of course, yeah. And then I think it's Gretchen Whitmer. You're probably right, but here's my it point. It was the guy that got fired in New York. He's He was one of them, Cuomo, too. But Cuomo. He, no, he's the mayor of the city, isn't he? He's not the governor of the state. Governor Governor of New York. Who's the mayor of the city of New York? Michael Bloomberg? No. No? No, he ran for president. Bloomberg was the mayor. Yeah. I rode on a train with him. Andrew? Yeah, I know. He said he was real short. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> no offense to people out there. Andrew Cuomo was the governor. Okay. Maybe. I can't. Right? Re- COVID and the, <laughs> yes, yes, the yes, nursing yes, but but- mandates. Who is the mayor of the city of New York? <laughs> it was Giuliani, right? Mayor Long time mayor. ago. 9-11 time ago. Then there was Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. My point being, <laughs> I think people in Idaho know who Tom Izzo and Jim Harbaugh are. Idaho? Yeah, and I don't think they know who Gretchen Whitmer is for the most part. This is interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Kid Rock? I mean, they're not. Wow. Wow. They're not, not wrong. Eminem, they're not people that we oh like. Oh my goodness! Now you blew up my whole thing yeah, because you Gretchen. have to I'm think. You know, I think it still might be Gretchen Whitmer because mm. Donald Trump went after her and it made her like a thing in SNL. But it, maybe that was momentary. M- momentary for like ten minutes. Yeah, mo- maybe yeah, she yeah, ascended yeah, yeah. and people forgot. But they didn't forget who Eminem is. Mm-mm. But did they? Or is it just our generation? Then you got to do that. No, it's, that that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that younger generation might wow. go. I don't okay. know. Okay, all right. Let me let me move on. Do you? I, this went from okay. way further. Than okay. I thought what? Right. What do you? What is your? Who's my answer? No, what you were just about to ask me a question. Uh I was going to ask you if you thought somebody else would surpass those people's names. No, I do not. Okay. No, in fact, you added people that I think are credible that I didn't even consider. Okay. Put Kid, those com- in the Kid comments. Rock. You guys want to fire the comments? Tell us the most famous person in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, 
history, Michigan history, who's the most famous Michigander to ever live? Henry Ford. You're right. Darn it. That was <laughs> you're right. I, you said you're right. Like, you're there's right. no other possible answer. I wanted it to answer. be an argument. You know what's funny, though? Gerald Ford. And it's not, though. It, he is one. But I think Henry Ford trumps yeah. him all day. I think people don't even know who Gerald Ford is, man. Yeah. Was never elected in any way. You know, there was not a single vote cast for him for vice president or president ever. Oh, yeah, right. I, yeah, I guess except I, I when remember. He, I knew that except one when he got torched by yeah. Jimmy Carter. Yeah. But, but he was never, he was appointed and then mm -hmm. became, he was not even on a ticket. Madonna. Oh, wow, Scott. Big names, dude. I mean, those are huge names. Uh-huh. But you're right. I don't think Gerald Ford. <laughs> Gerald Ford's not in that I don't think he's, he's in, not that in that conversation. Race. No. Not like that. Not Henry Ford level. Nope. Henry Ford. That's what I'm going to go with at the moment. Last question. Yeah. The second most famous city in the state of Michigan. Grand, mm -hmm. Ra Grand Rapids. Is it? Yeah, I guess. I can't fight you. Yeah. Grand Rapids. You're probably right. It's the second most populous state. City. State. City. City. Still, um, still in city. The, in the state. I know. it. I misspoke. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Grand Rapids. I Lansing's think right. the capital, but it's very kind of unknown. It's unknown. Traverse City's big to us, but people right. do not know Traverse no, they City. Don't. No. It's Grand Rapids. Huge churches over there, like it's the, it's the uh, Midwestern Bible, Bible Belt. Belt. Yeah, and like, I've been to a couple. Yeah, and they're like I even think so. I know this is total like Christianese, but even like if you know it's like publishing books and stuff like that, so much of that comes out of Grand Rapids. Zondervan, right? Yeah, is that the name of it? Yeah, I, think, I, I guess. Yeah. I know Zondervan. I don't know if they're in Grand Rapids. I think but, they are, but somebody is. So that was a good one. That's you like that one? Yeah, I'd like to know. That went further. People, than people can throw out some names I that might I surpass it. some of those others. I thought I had it slam dunked, and you blew it up. It's not a slam dunk. I she think... crossed my mind, so it's not okay. like I thought no, but yeah. No, you're not wrong with yeah. some of these other guys, man. I but I also feel like we're missing some p huge people too. They're probably going to say something. Yeah, They're going to yeah, be yeah. like, and we're, it's we're this person, and it. we're like, oh, we didn't. I didn't think about this before, but. All right. Hey, let's get into some let's go. modesty. Let's go. So um, I'm going to – I did not know this. I had to look this up. The, the, the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition. Send it. Okay. You can kind of take this two ways. So there's, there's, there's unassuming or moderate, like a humble-like attitude in your abilities. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, Pastor, you're the best preacher ever. <laughs> Best preacher ever. Oh man, I appreciate that. No, you you should see these other guys. Like that's a what is that? A modest approach. You would say like yeah. So it's oh, a, he's a modest guy. That's it's kind of it. It goes with humility. Yep. I would say. I like that. Okay. And of course, this is a whole different thing. There can be fake fake humility and fake modesty. Of there course. often is. And then the other one is behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid indecency. That is. When people think about it. They think of that. Don't yes. They? Yes. So I just wanted to kind of throw those out there. I think that's really what we're talking about uh -huh. in this sense. That that's what they're talking about. It always goes to what? What's the what's the women's big, clothes? Women's clothes. Yeah, that's what they do. So <clears throat> there's a few things that we want to talk about in here. Mainly, it is not. It is so much more than just clothing, and it is definitely applicable to. All humans, not just women. Absolutely. I think the church kind of does a, I say church, well, whatever, universal worldwide church, like a poor job of just saying the women need to be more modest, right? And they're basically talking about one specific thing of showing too much skin. I don't know how else to say it. Is yeah, that, they're, yeah, they're talking about yeah exposing themselves with yeah. their clothing or some something yeah. like that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. but... It comes down to so much more. So we're going to read a couple of a couple of verses. Uh, let, let me start with this one. So this is one that is thrown out there a ton and can be abused, I would say, in some s situations of that. First um, Timothy two nine. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty. My version actually says the word modesty and self control, not with braided hair, gold or pearls or costly attire. So. Um, but with 
but what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works? What is that referring to? What is that not referring to? And what is that referring to? I'm well, asking. I don't think it's actually referring to braided hair. Mm-mm. So this is where you get into a strange territory. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to consider. You can also fall off the rails and go too far and yeah. justify anything you want. So you have to. Ab- absolutely. You yeah. have to find yeah, yeah, yeah. the spirit of truth sometimes in the text. Mm-hmm. When the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Well, that's what it means now, doesn't it? And it's mm-hmm. talking about in the unlawful murder or taking of a life. It's not talking about the justice system because mm-hmm. the Lord was clear on that. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. It's like, well, it's not really means it. Like, no, but there are times when it's talking about a heart of a matter yeah. and is given yeah. a visible application in the scripture Yes, that across time and culture, so at that time, braided hair and different things meant an advertisement of sexual immorality mm-hmm. or idolatry mm-hmm. or a solicitation mm-hmm. of some kind of sin. Mm-hmm. So that's why he said that. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you can take that and go, right, right. No, no pigtails. Mm-hmm. For real, that's that's what the Jesus called Apostle Paul meant. Yeah. That you can't do a French braid. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. It's talking about the advertisement of sinful attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's more to that, too. There's, more there, there's to a that. lot more to that, yeah. So I don't think it's talking about a list of outfits. or It's just, I don't know if that's what you're going 100%, for. But that's, that's exactly, so you have yeah. to think about that yeah. sometimes in the Bible when it yeah. says, you know, women should cover their heads for a symbol of authority. Well, what's it talking about? It's talking about a submission to authority in the heart of a woman, particularly in marriage and mm-hmm. so forth. So you can't go, how come their heads aren't covered? Because you can cover your head and be rebellious in your heart. So what's the difference? Now you're a legalist. Exactly. Now you're a Pharisee. Yeah. Oh, I don't braid my hair, so I'm godly. You could be totally arrogant in your supposed modesty. Right. It's kind of a rant. I just no, I, I didn't even know good. it was in me until just now. <laughs> You're but I don't out. like that stuff, yeah. like, you know, where it's a checklist uh-huh. of uh-huh. do's and don'ts, and that makes you righteous. That's what the Pharisees did. And you can be so sinful. on This is what Jesus yeah. is talking about. Clean the outside, yeah. inside you're rotten. Yeah. And this, this is good, too, because this is probably been projected on many people, mostly women. Mm-hmm. And I would say it is possible, I can't say for sure in every scenario, but it's possible a, a young girl is going to grow up hearing this, and they don't know the why. They don't even really know exactly. what what is behind it. They just see a list of rules where I have to wear this, I have to wear this, and, and I can't wear this. Mm-hmm. And I think, like from a personal experience, legalism, well, let's just say this, I won't even say legalism, but rules without understanding the why, mm-hmm. would to me, leads to like, often rebellion like they get to a place of going this this literally doesn't even make any sense and so i'm going to do the exact opposite it has led to that has led to that so many times yeah yeah i i it's led to that in my life oh dude i'm I mean, we've talked about our backgrounds and i'm very yeah. much prone to that and yeah. i and i have to check myself and going like even the why of like i almost want to do it just to put it in people's face that's not cool i'm not i'm not saying it is it's, no exactly but that's right but happens. we have done that in yeah. our life in a more immature spiritual time yeah you know rebelling against this right what the bible i think would say you tie up heavy burdens but you're not willing to lift a finger to remove them the yeah. pharisees just tied up burdens and tied up burdens and, and there yeah. was no reason there was yeah. no real godliness yeah, it looks like you were going to read something. Yeah, here. well, on this the... note, he says it again. So, again, just pointing out kind of the over, whether you're talking about modesty or anything in the Bible, sometimes you have to, I think the Holy Spirit brings that discernment, but you have to discern mm-hmm. what the spirit of the point is mm-hmm. rather than every practical uh, outpouring that he's talking about in a cultural time. Yeah. For example, yeah. he says in First Peter... Your adornment, he says a very similar thing, your adornment must not be merely external. He talks about braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on dresses, which is funny because the legalists, the same legalists that preach this kind of modesty to women, say women should only wear dresses and never wear pants. But they never point out that the right, Bible says right. don't wear dresses. So right. what does it say? Right. Wear pants? It's, it's not what it's saying. Yeah. It's saying yeah. that during this time there is a heart in a woman that can be out of the wrong place mm-hmm. 
and solicit, it, or and it can be in a man too, which we'll talk about. We're not yeah, going to. This gonna is not a there. target yeah, to women, no, people. No, so no. don't don't click off. This isn't about women. This is about people that are Christians. So I guess I'm pointing out to people that want to check these lists. Don't braid your hair. Don't wear earrings. Don't put makeup. Don't do this. And then they will always say, "Women wear dresses." Mm. Nah. What about this though? So I don't think that's the point that he's making at all. Mm -hmm. he, he's making a greater point, and this is the point. Let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. That was the point he was making, and that's what still needs to be had. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, going that's great. on, I guess. Let's uh, bring this to practical application for us today and go and say, what, so what, what would that look like as a Christian for... Let's just let's pick on guys now, specifically because I know this example here has women in it. But what would that mean for you today? Like, what is the sense of how should I take that? What is my attitude? Mm -hmm. Whatever, walking into the church, presenting myself. How far does that go? Yeah. Well, so you know, with women, we think of the appearance of their body, the revealing mm -hmm. of their body. This girl's immodest, and there is a truth to that. Mm -hmm. That's not incorrect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not wrong. But with the guys, like, no one ever talks about it. Mm -hmm. So it can be a guy trying to draw attention to his body or yeah. his appearance or his, you know, his physical physique or something because he's an egomaniac or insecure or both. Yeah. Is there a difference? And that could go beyond, like, it could be, like, vehicles and uh, job status, too. So Yes. Yeah. So that's what I think it can be. How expensive are your clothes? Yeah. How yeah. how much flair is in your clothes to draw attention to you or to your money or to some type of personality that you're trying to portray? Mm -hmm. And you're just and I think that's what he's talking about here. Don't be flashy. Don't draw. Don't don't try to live in a spirit of comparison. Don't yeah. try to outrun the next guy and make people feel lesser. And you're right. The vehicle. Uh, his material items, and I think guys violate this all the time, and mm -hmm. girls take the punch on it mm -hmm. because they wore a certain kind of shirt or something. Yeah, no, they they really do. So let let me ask you this: so there can be, I would say, based on understanding of this, there can be rules that a person would need to define for themselves, right? Okay, like sure. so. How do I how do I get into that? So mm -hmm. I want to ask you how how do you yeah good how do you bring that to going? This is for me where I can draw the line or this, mm -hmm. these are areas that I don't want to cross. What's it look like in your life? Well, the, the, I'm a simpleton sometimes, so I mm -hmm. need it to be simple. Yeah. And, and yeah. I have thought about this. I really do. I think about it <clears throat> a fair amount. I don't want to be a stumbling block mm -hmm. to my testimony or the work of the Lord in me. And what that means to me is, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I, I'm not, I'm not like a, I can be materialistic in, mm -hmm. in certain ways, but I'm not like a clothes guy. Mm -hmm. But what I can do or be lured into is ten tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, I like <laughs> I like Jordans, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I have two pair of Jordans that I only preach in just because I, my property is so dirty that <laughs> I have to have shoes yeah. dedicated to preaching or they all get covered in mud. Mm -hmm. So I have these two pair of shoes. Um, and I just have like a regular pair of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Those are all the tennis shoes I have. Um but I think about when I'm buying shoes, there are some shoes that I've liked where I look at them on the shelf and I'm like, those are cool. Mm -hmm. But I don't want it to be too much. You know, I, I have to think like people are going to recognize these are going to know how much they cost. And, and, and am I trying to say, is that a stumbling block mm -hmm. to my testimony in the community, to my testimony around other people yeah, with less yeah. or to the preaching of the gospel? That's how I measure it. Am I, I don't mind having a, okay style i'm not like a style guy okay mm -hmm. but like i don't mind having decent shoes where people go oh those are cool shoes i don't mind i'm not looking for that mm -hmm. so i have to ask myself that am i looking for compliments no i just yeah. like them because yeah. they're nostalgic for when i was a child like that's yeah michael you know the deal yeah but i'm not going to pay an insane amount i'm not going to judge someone who does i just don't do it because i could see where it would be a stumbling block in my life and they can't be too flashy like it can't be too crazy where man mm -hmm. this guy's always an advertisement billboard mm -hmm. like what is what is he really about yeah and, and i don't think that like we're never going to be able to not offend somebody in some point Absolutely so like not. they can accuse you of a hundred million things but i think yep. i think yeah you kind of hit on it is going like i gotta be able to answer this for myself mm -hmm. what's the reason i'm doing this you you and i've talked about this a lot i think this is probably your um 
your thing that I've adopted maybe over time, but we talk about vehicles. Yeah, sure. And even even driving vehicles. And, and the goal is, like, I want to be a witness to the richest of the rich and the mm-hmm. poorest of the poor on the same day, yeah, right? Same so, day. you know, whatever. And I know this is kind of just our way. This does not mean that everybody has to follow these things at all. Yeah. But if you drove, um, you, know, you know, a brand new Mercedes into somebody who does not have any money. Poorest neighborhood in town. Poorest neighborhood in town. They're going to look at you and go, who, who's this guy I think he is? Maybe. I know we're assuming some things, but it's quite quite possible. Likely. It's likely. Likely. And they might feel off-putting, or you might be off-putting to them that's kind of uncomfortable. But on the same grounds, you wouldn't want to drive into a millionaire's house and have this ratty vehicle leaking oil dripping on his thing, and like yeah. it's just making no- <laughs> noises coming yeah. in. I got, I got, I got. Smoke. <laughs> right. And so for them, they might go, I ain't going to listen to this pastor because... You can't speak into my life, right? You're a bad steward of your yeah, stuff. You know, and right. sometimes I can my stuff can border on that one. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But it, I, so you say you adopted it from me. I appreciate you saying that. I'm just going to give credit. I stole it from a college professor. Oh, okay. At Liberty, okay. Doctor Fink. Okay. And he said exactly what you just said. He said, "Drive the car that's invisible to everybody." Invisibles, yeah. And I, yeah, and he yeah, said yeah. he gave those exact examples. He goes, "You don't want to go to the poor neighborhood <clears throat> to do ministry." And be a stumbling block because you're driving, you know, a hundred fifty thousand dollar car. Yeah. And he goes, you don't want to go to the wealthy neighborhood that need counsel and are looking for the gospel. And his exact words were, "I leak a quart of oil on oh, the okay. driveway." Okay. He said, like, "Get the right kind of car." Yeah. That is just a tool that is, you know, and and not everybody agrees with us. There are guys out there like, yeah. forget that man. Like, and, and I'm that's okay. I just that's right. what we do. Yeah, and I think that's like at the end of the day, like we got to be able to answer that for ourselves. And we, I, you know, I, and I can't even live to your specific convictions in, in that mm-hmm. too. But I think the main point is, are you, are we willing to ask ourselves these questions? So that that definition talks about intended to avoid avoid indecency, and I do think of that the vehicle situation like that's indecent in some aspects, in some instances where where it could be that. So. Um, having the hard attitude so okay now i i think people might want to go give me some basis for yeah. rules I, I know they're gonna they're gonna ask they this want one. they want rules there are and, and, and i, I don't get that them, i get it's... that but i would say we can kind of talk about that you have to define your own rules but it is based off of biblical principles we'll, yeah. we'll say it that way and so be careful not to put your rules on somebody else because there are extremely um I don't know what the word is, overly modest, extreme conservative people that dress wise that would look down on other people yeah. because everybody else should be doing this. And, and you know what, I, I want to talk about this too. And in, in, with the idea of grace, there are people that honestly just have no, and I don't mean this in a mean way. They have no idea. No, they don't. No idea. Like no. wouldn't even think about it. They haven't, they haven't gotten to this point yet. Yeah, right. And so, oh, I, I just wear that. That's what every other person in my world is wearing. It never even crossed my right. mind. Right. It was a warm summer day. It was 85 out. So I, I just wore this. Everybody else is doing it too. So I think we need to be gracious in going, understand yeah. the, the motive of the heart. Okay. So let's talk about what are some questions we could ask ourselves Maybe we just go to the dress as an example. Yeah, that's what people want to know yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. Um, for themselves, for their kids, all of that. You know, I, I would say, um, I guess I want, I want to say this. This probably speaks to ladies more than it does men, but it, it, it is applicable to both, is this. is Where where do you find your worth? Like, where does, where does my worth come from? And that is in, I mean, that that's in Christ, Right, and so the truth is, we don't find worth in him every day. So we we are looking to appease man, man, woman, human, get attention right. and affection yeah. and positive comment. Yeah. and yeah, sure. Right. So men I, and women alike, we're men all, and women yeah, alike, we're yeah. all vulnerable yeah. to doing that. Yeah, sure. and I would, I think that helps me understand like, <clears throat> the guy who's trying to show off his job or his mm-hmm. whatever his wow you're successful man, yeah you're yes. doing well yes oh. even even if it's in vagueness like they kind of want to be complimented mm-hmm. for those things and i would say where where's your worth coming from right and that that that's kind of helped me to to think about that because i am not a closed person at all but we're all susceptible to this in some way look of we're course. all we're all loving the compliments and you know sometimes you fight it but you're like 
we're, we're human, right? Right. <laughs> we're not we're not mad when somebody says, well, that was the best sermon I've ever heard in my life. There's a part of you that's like, okay, I appreciate right. that, you know? Right. And right? so that can go to your appearance yeah. or your money or yeah. your life. Yeah. And then so it strikes a nerve and then you then you got to watch out because then you start look, you start fishing for it. You become mm-hmm. a fisherman. So anybody, man or woman, could do that by what they wear. Oh, wow, that felt really good. They may not have gone outside to be complimented, but they got complimented in the store. Yeah. Somebody, hey, man, yeah, you look really yeah. great. And that felt so good Yeah, because yeah. there's such a lack of worth, as you say, to steal the point you're making. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. Then they go fishing for it. Now mm-hmm. we got a modesty problem. Like mm-hmm. now we got we got an identity problem. Mm-hmm. And that's the heart of it. Yeah. We're like, man, my wife doesn't compliment me for my success. Right. So I'm going to show it to other people. Right. Or my family doesn't appreciate me, my friend. So I'm going to show it to other people. I'm going to put it on display to see if I can get that because it feels so good like a drug. Yeah. My husband doesn't compliment me anymore. I don't feel beautiful in my house or with whoever. Right. But I do over here. So I'm going to start right. wearing less and less or certain types of things that advertise me where people and that, that caters to something. In yeah. Me. And yeah. now so now you violate modesty because of an identity void. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I think so. I, mean, I, think, I think it's just good it's... for people to think about that. And we're yes. all vulnerable to it. We're not we're all, preaching yeah, as oh, though dude. we don't know what this is. We certainly do. Absolutely. But it helps it helps curb that a little bit. And 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 some and some people may struggle with this for the rest of their life. This is not necessarily like the the end all cure, but it is a mindset. Help helps me curb it, like to think about that in that sense of like like uh what is it Galatians just says, Am I seeking the approval of man or am I seeking mm-hmm. the approval of God? Right. And in that, that's that's just so true. Like every day, like we think, we might not have admitted that to ourselves, but a lot of us, we all have, seeking the approval of. You know what? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. You could. Yeah. So it's interesting because I'm not, I'm not trying to tell people to dress inappropriately. Of course, we're not doing that. Mm-hmm. But you could you could violate modesty in a way. By dressing most conservative, oh yeah, because people are complimenting you on being. I wish more women. I wish more men would dress like you. Yeah, I wish more people would act like you. And you're like, I know, and that, and it's not even about Jesus. It's not Mm -hmm. about your identity. It's not about pleasing God. That's still about you. Yeah. And so, in wearing the ultimate model for modesty, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're the. I would more people. I wish these women around here would take notes from you, and that feels good to that person. So then they play that role. Yeah. They perform. For a compliment that yeah. speaks to a void that they are not letting Jesus fill. I mean, yeah. it's weird that you can. So then, is it really about the clothes? Right, right. What know? is it about? Yeah, that's that. I mean, this that shows so much more that this is a heart matter, and it is right. really nothing to do with clothes. So, I don't want to get into the weeds on some of this, but I do want to mention this too. Is like again, it, it always goes back back to females, females' clothes and inappropriateness and understanding the the mindset of a guy and mm-hmm. the the attraction and the so guys are visually attracted more than more than females in general right so we all know the issues that would come come with that but here here's the thing i as a guy <clears throat> i feel i feel like it's it's fair to say this like we don't need to be putting those projections on those girls like we we have our own issues to deal with and mm-hmm. i can say this for a fact <clears throat> whether they are uh, wearing uh, turtlenecks or or swimsuits, there are less issues happening anyway, right? So like, you, I'm sorry, what do you say that again? Because like, I think I know what you just said. But you're saying it. Do, if you have an issue, you have an issue. It doesn't matter. A guy that's gonna lust is a guy that's gonna lust. Doesn't matter what you're wearing. Listen, you can look at the eyes mm-hmm. of a Muslim woman yeah. through the thing and yeah. go, yeah, 99 percent covered. Wow, up. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a guy, yeah. a guy that's in in sin, a guy that's not submitted to the Lord, right. can find a way to have a problem yeah. through a Muslim burqa, mm-hmm. like and look and go, man, she got beautiful eyes. Yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah, ridiculous, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So like, yeah, you can. Yeah. So I guess from a guy's side, don't blame women's apparel on your lust issues. I got all these problems. That's these, these that's women kind of out yeah. here, you know. Don't yeah. don't do yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. Now, on the other hand. It is helpful probably for women to understand the way that guys' minds work, and it's possible you could be helping or hurting a situation. Yeah. So I would say that. I don't want to speak too much to the women because— No, and that's not more their fault or anything, but in the same way that we would need to be aware of how women think and not hurt their Mm -hmm. identity in Christ or demean our sisters in the Lord, 
know a little bit about what your brothers in the Lord battle yeah. against the devil too. Yeah. Yep. And it, and everybody's healthier for it. Everybody's healthier for it. Yeah, that, that's kind of the way I'd say it. It's, it's more about bringing awareness to, to that situation. But um, but I've heard guys blame girls, and that, that, that frustrates me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, just just take responsibility for your own your own garbage in your life, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. yeah, no, no, you can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other good. the other question I did write down too is defi- how how would you define beauty? I know that this kind of goes into worth as well, and maybe again, maybe this is more of a female thing than than a male thing, but but I do think about raising my daughter, and I am the farthest thing from a perfect dad, but I have it in my head that I want, I want her to know that she is beautiful regardless of whatever clothes she's ever put on, yeah. regardless of any makeup. And yeah. I, m- maybe this isn't good or not, but sometimes I try to stay away from, like if she goes from, from pajamas and is like, dad, what do you think about, I'm going to go put this dress on. I don't want to make it sound like you're only beautiful in that dress and you weren't in the pajamas. Sure. Yeah. You know that's what a good mean? point. No, that's so good. I, I, I try to think about that because like beauty from our world is often defined on that that glamour and the mm-hmm. the makeup and the earrings and and all of that the the adornment I guess you could say, um, but having having to understand that dude like we are created in the image of God loved by our Creator and beautiful in in His eyes regardless of what the world may think. Absolutely. I know those are kind of intertwined with the worth and the beauty, but no, I think it's a good tie that you're making. I mm. think it may help people understand it. I, I like it. Okay. Final thoughts from you yourself. Well, I, I think I just want to try to give people something to hold in their hand a yeah. little bit. And I, you know, you don't have to, you you know, you're not me and I'm not you and that's yeah. fine. But, uh, whether you're a man or woman out there and you are a Christian, a Christ follower, and you want to do something, you know, mm-hmm. you want to have a practical thing to make sure that mm-hmm. you're walking according to some kind of biblical standard of modesty. I think the stumbling block is is a good question to mm-hmm. ask yourself. Am I a stumbling block to anybody, uh, man or woman, mm-hmm. in my testimony? Mm-hmm. Is this, am I lying to myself? Mm-hmm. And I'm doing mm-hmm. things sometimes to advertise for complimentary affection, Mm -hmm. man or woman. Mm -hmm. And if so, does that not speak to a lack of peace with God, a lack of worth and value in the Lord Jesus alone, if he's the only one that values me? Right. Like, run it all the way down the well. And if you can get through those questions... You know, am am I considering others more important than myself, my sisters in the Lord and my brothers in the Lord mm-hmm. in how I conduct myself, how I clothe myself, mm-hmm. how I, you know, drive my vehicle, whatever, yeah. Yeah. my home. If you can answer those, then I believe that your heart is going to be clean and your conduct will be godly. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to have a list of outfits. I don't think, I think that's why the Bible doesn't really give it. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to give that, like, okay, go down this and kind of think about these things, and that's mm-hmm. gonna that's gonna clean up and reveal issues. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And and if you need to make for yourself rules based off of that, I think that could be okay. Yeah, it's it is okay. You know, I don't. Yeah. I guess we all have them to some degree. I would I would imagine. I don't know the. I had a guy exactly. say to me the other day. He's a good guy. He's probably watching. He's awesome. Uh, and he's walking with the Lord, and he's growing in the Lord, and he, mm-hmm. you know he's 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 newer to consuming the Scripture mm-hmm. for the purpose of it changing his life. And he told me the other day, he goes, "You know what I did?" He goes, "I'm just telling you this for like kind of for accountability sake." I just want to tell you. And uh, we were talking on the phone, and he's and he's he's he's, super, he's a super jack dude. Like he's super like mm-hmm. he's almost he's almost as shredded as you and I. <laughs> you believe that? Like, how could that be possible? <laughs> Speaking, speaking of modesty. Modesty. All right. He's, he's almost. Oh, my goodness. No, he's, he, he's, he looks like a pro athlete. Yeah. And yeah. He, he said, I went on my Instagram. And he said, I took down every picture that I had on there at me at the beach and on lakes and stuff with my shirt off. He goes, I mm. just felt like I was being boastful and I was looking for an attention that wasn't godly. Wow. And I took it down. That's not, that's not anybody else's rule out there. But that's right. a good indicator. Right. God convicted him through yeah. the script. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. To fish. Yep. Yep. 
and it's not right yeah. for your heart yeah. or anybody else's yes. motive for giving you affection. It's wrong for everybody. And he, he took it down. So somebody might say, man, I don't wear these kind of shirts anymore. I don't wear tank tops anymore. I don't wear this kind of swimsuit. It just isn't right for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Work that out with the Holy Spirit and the yeah. Word of God. Yeah. That's really good. I'll echo those thoughts and just yeah, making sure that we're asking ourselves and, and being aware of it. But uh, I think we'll close on we'll close on that. That's good. Cool. All right. As always, don't take our word for it. Be in His, and we'll see you next time on the Encore.